Now let's continue our calculations from the last video. I uh, collected all the statements, um, all the ass assumptions we have made uh, from the last video. So we still have our functions f and g. We have a minimizer x bar of f plus g. We, ha we will have some starting points and we will, our iteration will be given by gamma n um, uh, as xn plus a part of the progress, some so some factor times the progress we have made in the last step. And um, it, it turns out that this is the right choice to, to accelerate the convergence of um, the forward-backward method. And the, for, the, the forward-backward step is now uh, taken with respect to yn. So you take the gradient of f at yn and take the proximal point of yn minus gamma times this gradient. Okay, and by this um, calculation, you obtain xn plus 1. And we have also seen that we want to have um, some, um, some point zn, and we set it to xn plus lambda times xn minus xn minus 1. And we want to have this telescoping properties for this point. And we got exactly this with this expression last time. So the last, so the, the inequality we, we stopped with is this one, um, when, when now uh, we, have, we, we were uh, talking about the estimation of the functional value at xn plus 1 um, and x bar the minimizer, okay? And we stopped here and this was the last expression which we, which we now uh, will simplify further. Okay, so um, we want to rewrite all of this just with, um, uh, with uh, differences xn plus 1 minus xn and xn minus xn minus 1. Okay, uh, we, we, we don't have any x bar anymore, we just have um, put, it, uh, put all the things we don't want to touch anymore in the, in the, on the left hand side of the inequality. And what we are left with are, are just our points here, and we, we just have to insert the definition of yn to, or expand the definition of yn to just uh, collect all the terms uh, which belong together. All right, let's uh, just uh, try this out. So uh, this will be equal to. And now we see we have yn equals xn plus something. So we have in, in the, the first term will be minus 1 over gamma times xn minus... So, so uh, sorry. Uh, the term will be 1 over gamma xn minus xn plus 1, xn plus 1 minus xn. And this is obviously minus 1 over gamma n uh, norm of xn plus 1 minus xn squared. So this is the first part just with this. And the second part of this expression uh, is the, the rest, like this here. So we take plus uh, lambda n over gamma 1 plus lambda n plus 1. So uh, this thing, um, xn minus xn minus 1, in the inner product with xn plus 1 minus xn. All right, now we have this term. So now, uh, next we want to expand uh, the quadratic term here. So we have xn plus 1 minus yn. Uh, yn is again this sum. So this will be uh, a quadratic term and we can use the binomial formula as we have seen many times now, by now. So this will be plus L half norm xn plus 1 minus xn squared. Um, the first part. Then the second part will be given by, by this expression here. So we have plus lambda n squared over 1 plus lambda n plus 1 squared. Okay. This is the second quadratic expression. Now we have to take the mixed expression. So this will be the inner product between xn plus 1 minus xn and minus 
xn minus xn minus 1. So we have a minus sign here. We have a, a factor of 2 because this is the, the mixed product in a, in a binomial expression. So we multiply L with this. So we have minus lambda and L over 1 plus lambda n plus 1. And this is the inner product between xn plus 1 minus xn and xn minus xn minus 1. Okay? And yeah, and now we had just have to take the other two terms here. Um, so plus 1 plus lambda n plus 1 over 2 gamma, norm of xn plus 1 minus xn squared, minus lambda n squared over 2 gamma, 1 plus lambda n plus 1, xn minus xn minus 1 squared. Okay, this term. Okay. Now we have everything, and now the next step uh, will be to just uh, collect all these terms um, ordered by, uh, like here we have three terms with three terms with norm of xn plus one minus xn, and we just just want to uh, compress everything. Okay, so this expression is equal to. Now let's let's have a look. Uh, at all the terms with xn plus 1 minus xn squared, so these three. The common denominator is 2 gamma, and I personally want a minus sign there, just for convenience. So here we have minus 1 over gamma, so this is minus 2 over 2 gamma. Great. Of this, um, we have this. Uh, this here is plus L gamma over 2 gamma. Since we have a minus, we just want to uh, subtract this. Okay. Then we have this term here also with a plus, and this will be minus um, 1 plus lambda n plus 1 over 2 gamma. And this is xn plus 1 minus xn squared. Okay. Then all the terms with um, xn minus xn minus 1 squared, this term and this term only. So it's only two terms. Uh, I also want a minus here. And the common denominator is... Wait a second, something is missing here. Um, the L half is missing. So we have a factor L half, and I forgot to, roll, to, to write it here. Sorry about that. So L half has to be added here. Uh, then this makes a lot more sense. Um, so the common denominator will be um, 2 gamma 1 plus lambda n plus 1 squared. And then here we have the, the term with the minus will read lambda n squared times uh, 1 plus lambda n plus 1. And here this will read lambda n squared times L gamma. So the common factor is lambda n squared. And then we have 1 plus lambda n plus 1 here, yes, um, minus uh, gamma, uh, minus L gamma, yes. Okay. Okay. So now we have covered this term and this term. 
And now the mixed term uh, will be uh, given by this here, uh, by, by the sum of those two. So this will be plus, and we have gamma 1 plus lambda n plus 1, okay, uh, lambda n minus lambda gamma, um, lambda n, and this is the common factor, and here we have uh, lambda n times 1, and here we have minus lambda n times L gamma. So 1 minus L gamma. Okay. Okay, now we see this here. And um, we want to add one more assumption. Uh, I have uh, consciously not written anything about gamma here. This is now because we want to choose gamma right now. Um, we want to go full telescoping on this. So we want to have like corresponding terms for, um, for n and n plus 1 for, for almost everything. Um, on the left hand side and on the right hand side of the equation. And therefore we want to get rid of this um, this mixed term here because we can use these terms here for telescoping but not the mixed term because then everything blows up and you cannot uh, you cannot really substitute n with n plus 1 or vice versa here uh, without ruining uh, the whole the whole thing. So also for, for simplicity reason, it, reasons it makes sense to choose gamma in such a way that this um, mixed term here disappears. And the way to do this is uh, very simple. You choose uh, gamma as 1 over L. This is what you do. And then the mixed term disappears. Simple. Okay, so let's just uh, uh, rewrite this under the assumption that gamma is equal to 1 over L. Okay, so this means that um, L gamma is equal to 1. Okay, so we still have minus and gamma here is equal to 1 over L, so this is L um, and here we have 1 minus 1 minus lambda n plus 1. So, yeah, this is actually shorter than expected. So we just have, so 2 minus 1 minus 1 minus lambda n plus 1. Okay, so it's just lambda n plus 1 and then we have um, the gamma from here gets to the numerator and becomes L because of this choice, and this is xn plus 1 minus xn norm squared. And for the other term here, we see that, uh, let, me, uh, let me check, so 1 and minus L gamma, this is, this is 0, so we have um, lambda n squared, um, ah, sorry, no, no, no parentheses here, lambda n plus 1 over, ah, an L, of course, because of the gamma, over 2, 1 plus lambda n plus 1 squared, xn minus xn minus 1 norm squared simple. So this is the, the final expression which we get for our um, efforts here uh, for the estimation between the function values at xn plus 1 and x bar. Um, now we want to estimate the function values at xn plus 1, uh, between xn plus 1 and xn, so between two consecutive iterations. So this is a new uh, sections, uh, section here. So by the proximal point 
inequality and the properties of F, uh, we get G at xn plus 1 less or equal than G of xn. So this is what we want to do now. Just to get, another, get, get just to get more information about our iteration, and we just we can we can directly use this gamma equals one over L. So we have plus where, where we would write write one over gamma. We write, just write L now, and now the argument here y n minus one over L gradient f yn um, minus xn plus 1. This is this uh, point here. And then we get xn plus 1 minus xn. OK. Um, OK, this is now um, the, the proximal point. Um, so the and what we have about G. Now let's use our information about F. And similarly, we just make a detour via Yn here. Um, so this means that our gradients will disappear finally. And this will prove advantageous. Okay. So the, the inequality is gradient F of Yn. And now we have xn plus 1 minus yn. OK. And we have to add L half uh, times the norm of xn plus 1 minus yn. So this was the, um, the Lipschitz property of f, um, the non-convex version. OK. So f of yn less or equal than f of xn. Now we use convexity. So this will be given by this. Oops, sorry. yn minus xn. OK, so now we have used everything we know about, uh, about the, the difference of function values in, f, in xn plus 1 and xn. OK. Now, this term is just a real number which appears twice. And then we uh, can also observe that all the terms with the gradients again disappear. So we have gradient f of yn of xn plus 1 minus yn plus yn minus xn. And here we have minus xn plus 1 plus xn. So everything uh, disappears. So we get Oops, that's the wrong color. I don't know if you see this. So f of xn plus 1 plus g of xn plus 1 less or equal than f of xn plus g of xn. Okay. Um, as I said, all the gradient terms disappear. This, this, and this. So we have plus. L um, inner product of y n minus x n plus 1 with x n plus 1 minus x n plus L half um, uh, norm of x n plus 1 minus y n squared. OK, and now we can actually be uh, a little bit tricky here. Um, we have xn plus 1 minus yn. We have minus xn plus 1 minus yn here. So we can just, um, yeah, we can just uh, complete uh, this um, expression here. Um, so this means that. Um, Let's see. So we can write, oh, first of all, fxn plus gxn plus l half 
norm of xn plus 1 minus yn. And now we have, we, we want to make a quadratic expression so that this is the mixed term. Here we have xn plus 1 minus yn, so this is actually minus uh, this. Okay, so we want to write minus here, and uh, the L half will lead to the coefficient L. So this is this. Okay. And now we have obviously made a mistake. So uh, the, the first quadratic expression will, uh, will be this one. The mixed expression will be minus um, L uh, inner product of this with this, which is exactly equal to this inner product. But then we have to subtract the second quadratic expression, which is L half norm of xn plus 1 minus xn. Okay, and now we see that xn plus 1 and xn plus 1 here disappear. So this is f of xn plus g of xn plus L half. And now we have yn minus xn norm squared, and this is exactly equal to, to this expression here. Okay, so this is not only L half, this is L um, lambda n squared over 1 plus lambda n plus 1 squared norm of xn minus xn minus 1 squared. This is the difference between yn and xn, this term here, and just uh, the squared norm of this multiplied with L half. And minus L half norm of xn plus 1 minus xn squared. Okay, so now we have, um, we have made these two estimations here, and so first the estimation between um, uh, function value at xn plus 1 and a minimizer, then between xn plus 1 and xn. And we have, we have brought them um, both in the form um, that, we, that we only have the, these function values, this thing which, which is designed to be telescoping, and uh, these norms squared, which, which um, could also, if the coefficients fit, potentially be useful for telescoping, okay? And in the next video, we will uh, finish our calculations by showing the improved convergence rate for the accelerated forward-backward method.